In this lesson, we're going to be identifying geometric sequences, extending and graphing geometric sequences, and writing geometric sequences as functions. In a geometric sequence, the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. This ratio is called the common ratio. Each term is found by multiplying the previous term by the common ratio. So if you see in this example, we have 1, 5, 25, and 125, and each time I am multiplying the previous term by 5. For example one, we need to decide whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Explain your reasoning. So for part A, I have 120, 60, 30, and 15. Well, if you notice, each time I'm cutting this in half, I'm dividing by 2. But we want to think of things in terms of multiplication, so another way to think of dividing by 2 is multiplying by the reciprocal of that, which is 1 half. So each time I'm multiplying by 1 half, so I know that this is a geometric sequence. If I look over in part B, I'm going from 2 to 6 to 11 to 17. Well, I'm not adding the same thing each time. Here I'm adding 4, then 5, then 6. And I'm not multiplying the same thing each time either. I'm multiplying 3 to get to 6. But then if I multiply 3 again, I don't get 11. I would get 18. So this is going to be a neither case. This is neither arithmetic nor geometric. And now we're done with example 1. For example two, we want to write the next three terms of each geometric sequence. Okay, So in order to find the next three terms, I need to find that common ratio, which is the number that I multiply the previous term by. So if you look in part A, I'm starting with three, then I go to six, so that's multiplying by two, and then times two again, times two again. Okay, Well, 24 times two is going to be 48, and then 48 times two is going to be 96, and 96 times two is going to be 192. All right, so you could have done that out if you needed to, um, but if you can do it in your head, great. But these are the next three terms of the sequence for part A. For part B, I'm going from 64 to negative 16 to positive 4 to negative 1. So notice how the sign is changing for each term. That means I'm going to be multiplying by a negative term each time because a negative times a positive is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive, and so on. Now I want to see what's happening. Okay, well, I, I notice that if I have 64 divided by negative 4, it's going to get me to negative 16. Uh, but remember, we want to think of things in multiplication. So if I multiply 64 by negative 1 fourth, I'm going to get to this next term. So my common ratio is going to be negative 1 fourth. So now if I do negative 1 times negative 1 fourth, that's just going to be positive 1 fourth. And then if I do positive 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth, that's going to give me negative 1 over 16. And then if I do negative 1 over 16 times negative 1 fourth, well, I'm going to get a positive number. And 4 times 16 is 64. So this is going to be positive 1 over 64. All right, so now I've successfully found the next three terms of each sequence, and now we're done with this one. For this example, we're going to graph the geometric sequence 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. All right? So if you remember, when we were graphing arithmetic sequences, we made a table of values. And if you remember, we had n, which was the position of our term, and then a sub n, which is the value of our term. Well, our first term is 32. Okay, our second term is 16. Third term is 8. Fourth term is going to be 4. My fifth term is going to be 2. Okay, And you could extend this, uh, but these are the points that were given. So now I'm just going to plot these points. Now the next part of this says, what do you notice, okay? Well, if you look at this, this is actually an exponential curve, okay? As you can see, I'm cutting the value of each term in half if I add one to n. So if I increase the sequence by one, I'm just reducing it by that common ratio here, okay? And if you see that this number is going to approach zero, but it's never gonna reach zero, okay? So what we notice is this looks like an exponential function. So now we're done with example three. 
writing geometric sequences as functions. Because consecutive terms of a geometric sequence have a common ratio, you can use the first term, a sub 1, and the common ratio, r, to write an exponential function that describes a geometric sequence. Let a sub 1 equal 1 and r equal 5. So we're starting out with 1, our first term is going to be 1, and then our common ratio is the number that I just multiply my previous term to get to my next term. So it's going to be, if we look over at the numbers, it's going to be 1, and then 1 times 5, and then 1 times 5 times 5, or 1 times 5 squared, which gives us 25, then 1 times 5 cubed, 125, and so on. And then we stop at 1 times 5 to the power of n minus 1. Whatever the position of the term is, we just subtract 1, take 5 to that power, and then that gets us our value for the nth term, okay? And in algebra, it looks like this. a sub 1 is our first term. Then our second term, we just multiply this by r, a sub 1 times r, okay? Then our third term, I do a sub 1 times r and then times another r, so that gives me r squared. And if you notice, the position of the term 3 is just going to be one more than the position, than the value of the exponent here. So this is a sub 1 times r cubed for our fourth term. So for our nth term, it's going to be a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Let a sub n be the nth term of a geometric sequence with the first term a sub 1 and a common ratio r. The nth term is given by a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. So if you wanted to rewrite a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1, we're going to do that right now. First, I'm just going to rewrite it. Okay. Well, remember, using our exponent properties, I can break r to the n minus 1 up into a sub 1 and then r to the n and then times r to the negative 1. Okay. Well, r to the negative 1 is just going to be 1 over r, which means I'm just going to put this on the bottom of the fraction. So this is going to be like a sub n equals a sub 1 over r times r to the power of n. So the only benefit to this is that your exponent and the position of the term match. Okay, But both of these formulas will work, and you can use either one. For this example, we're going to write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence, 2, 12, 72, 432, and so on. And then we're going to find a sub 10, the 10th term. So first I want to start off with my initial term, which is going to be 2 here. So it's going to be a sub 1. Okay, And now I need the common ratio. My common ratio is the number that I continually multiply by. So in this case, it's going to be 6, because 2 times 6 is 12, 12 times 6 is 72, 72 times 6 is 432, and so on. Okay, so I know that r equals 6. So now I've successfully identified the two things that I need. If we use our original formula, that's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, now when I plug these values in, it's going to be a sub n equals 2 times 6 to the power of n minus 1, okay? So this formula would totally work. If we did it the other way, the formula that I just derived from this, that's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1 over r times r to the n power, okay? So I'm going to plug my values in here, and if you notice, I'm going to get 2 over 6, which is going to be 1 third, so just write 1 third times 6 to the nth power, okay? So this formula and this formula are the exact same formula. They're gonna give you the exact same values when you plug in a value for n, okay? Let's use this bottom one because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier, but it really doesn't matter. So anyway, we wanna find the 10th term for this. So all that means I'm gonna plug in 10 for n. So I'm just gonna rewrite this formula, but instead of a sub n, it's gonna be a sub 10 equals 1 third times six to the 10th power, and you could do this out right now, but it's gonna save you much more time to use a calculator, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm typing in 1 third times six to the 10th power, and I get 20,155,392. So I'm gonna write that down. 
a sub 10 equals 20,155,392. So we've successfully written our formula in multiple ways. We only needed to write one way. And then I successfully found my value of a sub 10. And now we're done with this one. You can rewrite the equation for a geometric sequence with the first term a sub 1 and a common ratio r in function notation by replacing a sub n with f of n. Okay, And that equation is going to be f of n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Now, you could also write the equation using the way that we derived, which would be f of n equals a sub 1 over r times r to the power of n, okay? The domain of the function is the set of positive integers, okay? And this is because you need to be able to count um, what position your term is. You can't have, like, the 1 half term or the 6.7 term. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's try example 5. Clicking the zoom out button on a mapping website doubles the side length of a square map. After how many clicks on the zoom out button is the side length of the map 640 miles? So if you look at our table here, the number of zoom out clicks, if there's only one, then the side length is five miles, okay? If there are two zoom out clicks, it's 10 miles. And if there are three zoom out clicks, the side length is 20 miles, okay? So notice, for every zoom out click that I add, I'm multiplying by two, and that makes sense because we're doubling it. So let's write a function that represents this situation, okay? So if I were to treat this like a geometric sequence, I know that my first term would be five, my second term would be 10, and my third term would be 20, okay? So a sub one is gonna equal five, and then I know that my common ratio, r, is the number that I keep multiplying by, and that's gonna be two because the side length doubles. So r equals two. So now I'm gonna plug these values in. Sorry, didn't box it up. I'm gonna plug these values in to one of these equations. And since I used this equation in the last example, I'll use this one here, okay? But once again, both will work. So I'm gonna have f of n equals a sub one times r to the power of n minus one. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in these values. I'm gonna get f of n equals five times two to the n minus one power, okay? And now we wanna figure out when the side length is going to be 640. Now this is my output value, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna plug this 640 miles into my output, which is f of n, okay? And then I wanna use that to solve for n, okay? So anyway, down here I get 640 equals five times two to the n minus one. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna solve this equation for n, okay? So what I wanna do is get rid of anything that is happening to my exponential factor here. Okay, so this two to the n minus one, I wanna isolate this, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is divide by five on both sides. And if I do 640 divided by five, that's gonna give me 128. And now I get and these cancel, so I get equals two to the n minus one. So now I have 128 equals two to the power of n minus one. Now there's multiple ways to solve this equation, but one thing we can do is find a common base here, and I know that I can rewrite 128 having a power of two. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two to the power of seven, okay? And if you didn't know that, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64, times two is 128. So if there's seven twos being multiplied, it equals 128, so that's why I can rewrite this. Anyway, I'm just gonna bring this down. I get two to the n minus one power, but since I have the same base, I can set my exponents equal, and I can just have seven equals n minus one. And if I add one on both sides, I know that n is gonna equal eight. Now if we go all the way back up and see what they're asking us, how many clicks on the zoom out button will get us to this side length? Well, we know it's gonna be eight clicks. So it will take eight clicks to get the side length of 640 miles. So we've successfully solved for our number of clicks that it's gonna to take to get us to our side length. We've written our answer in word form, and now we're done.